Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Um, thanks for the opportunity uh, to talk to uh, everyone here. Um, I'm sure most of us uh, here, uh, one way or other, understand uh, the uh, impact of uh, non-performing uh, building materials and systems. Uh, I'm talking today uh, from the weatherproofing point of view. Uh, just to uh, give you an idea how important the weather uh, uh, proofing issue is, uh, uh, recently one of the Australian buildings, less than 10 years old, uh, had a uh, weather impacted uh, issue and uh, the cost of the litigation is of $50 million. Uh, in, in the US, uh, in the uh, early 70s, uh, about 15 to 20 percent uh, of the uh, litigation against the building personnel, architects, certifiers, builders, product manufacturers, and so on, uh, was about 20 percent, and it's been gradually increasing. And in the early 2000s, the number has hit every uh, uh, one in two uh, people. The uh, litigation, sorry, every one in two litigation is related to uh, the uh, weatherproofing. So it, it is an important uh, aspect. Um, I'm talking today about the weatherproofing through roofing and uh, cladding. So the requirement is basically the buildings to resist the moisture penetration. So uh, one in a 20 year uh, storm, any uh, water uh, that comes in uh, has to be disposed and managed. So it shouldn't uh, uh, affect the building and uh, any surrounding buildings as well. So the water shouldn't come through openings such as the roof, uh, the walls, cladding systems, and uh, anything else in, in, the, uh, in the building. So uh, the, the uh, requirements are, uh, uh, sorry, b before that I might just uh, show you that th there is a uh, uh, leaflet in your uh, seat and uh, th this uh, tells you the procedure what uh, needs to uh, be done and what sequence that needs to be followed. So basically, uh, the, uh, I'll, I'll be describing what we have got to go through uh, those processes. So essentially, FE1 is the uh, weatherproofing uh, uh, clause and that directly looks at our addresses, FE1.4. It's uh, not mandatory, but it's one of the alternative solutions. Um, you go through the um, uh, list in uh, the NCC, look at the, uh, uh, what is the uh, limitations and what is the score risks factor, and then you choose uh, the uh, test specimen uh, which will comply, uh, and it will have all the details, for example, the parapet walls, uh, the uh, electrical junctions, uh, the uh, corners, the uh, 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 terminating vertical as well as uh, horizontal details. Um, and, and uh, other, uh, uh, other details, so complete the details of what the realistic system is, and, and then they choose that uh, as a, uh, a test specimen, and, and then uh, comply, uh, evaluate whether uh, the system is a, a direct fixed wall or a cavity wall or a unique wall, and then go from uh, testing, go, go into testing. So uh, a, an example of the uh, test specimen is uh, just shown uh, here. Uh, so that kind of uh, gives you um, an idea of what I just uh, described. So uh, at the CSIRO, uh, we have uh, got a uh, facility. So you can see uh, that there, there is a, uh, a double story height uh, chamber uh, in which you can set up the uh, test specimen representing all the details. And uh, so uh, this particular slide shows you a cavity wall system. So also uh, the internal view and the external view of a direct uh, fixed wall cladding system are shown in this um, slide. So we've got uh, a pressure equipment to uh, apply the, uh, the building uh, wind pressures and uh, we have got uh, various uh, data takers and, and uh, instrumentation to uh, take the uh, uh, required readings. So essentially, uh, for a cavity wall, you uh, set the cavity wall up and uh, drill a 15 millimeter hole 
in the uh, wall lining to take into account of the, uh, what the uh, air uh, penetration through, air infiltration through. And uh, then uh, you can apply, uh, you, you must apply the 100% of the uh, serviceability design loads, uh, both positive and negative, for a minute each, and uh, uh, find out what, what the uh, reading and, and what the effect uh, of the uh, wind pressures onto the uh, building specimen. Following that, uh, you apply a static pressure water penetration. Uh, it is specified at 300 pascal if the, uh, uh, you, the weather uh, uh, pressure is uh, 100, uh, sorry, 1,000 pascal or, or less. And if it is more than 1,000 pascal, it is 30% uh, of the uh, designed load. Following that, you uh, take, uh, subject the uh, wall specimen into the third stage of uh, the uh, water penetration specified in uh, 4284, building uh, code 4284, which is 30 to 60% of the uh, um, pressure with uh, three liters per uh, minute per square meter area of the test uh, specimen. So uh, after th these two uh, tests are over, uh, then you uh, uh, allow uh, the building specimen uh, uh, subject the building specimen for uh, six millimeters of uh, hole at several areas and then you repeat the static and the cyclic water penetration test check if any of the uh, water has reached the uh, uh, interior uh, portion particularly the studs and then the uh, lining of the uh, wall and if not then remove the um, internal lining and then subject the uh, test specimen for a 50 pascal static water penetration. So this particular sequence applies for the uh, cavity wall and for the direct uh, fix uh, wall or unique wall, the first two steps are essentially the same, but then the static pressure and then the uh, full uh, sequence of the three cycles of the cyclic water penetration, 15 to 30 percent, 20 to 40 percent, and 30 to 50 percent of the design load uh, and, and uh, check through whether uh, there's any particular water penetration. So that uh, kind of uh, um, sequence, uh, we are uh, not authorized to do uh, these tests at our lab in uh, CSIRO. So uh, that, that uh, once uh, the uh, building specimen is uh, subjected to through this uh, sequence, it'll uh, prove that uh, you're complying to the NCC requirements. Thank you.